I've walked over a hundred miles in four days of my bug out bag. And here are the lessons that I learned the hard way. Check these out. Hey, what's up warriors? Jeff Anderson from warriorlife.com. And look, most people have never had to even walk a mile in their bug out bag. And let me tell you, hundred miles sucks. I know the Walking Dead make it look like it's so easy. You can walk across half the country and apparently not get tired. But I can tell you that when I was in light infantry, and especially when I was with 10th Mountain Division, each year we would do a 100-mile road march in four days with full backpack. And I can tell you that the reality of that is that your feet are going to look like a hamburger, and your shoulders and your back are going to feel like somebody took a sledgehammer to it. Now, I know a lot of people think, well, I'm never going to have to walk 100 miles with my bug out bag anyway, right? Yeah, you probably will never have to do that. But I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times that we would go out on a military mission and be able to get out there with Black Hawk or Hummer and all of a sudden there's no way back unless you're actually walking your way back in. So that happens and the same thing happens to you in a survival situation. Your primary mode of transportation, your vehicle, or even if you get to alternate mode like a bicycle, could break down and then all of a sudden it is you and your bug out bag. So it can happen. And what I discovered is that how you pack your bug out bag actually makes a huge difference in your survivability. It doesn't seem like all that sexy of a topic, but these things really are critical to your survival. And I've got eight really quick tips here for you that are gonna help you out. All right, tip number one is you wanna pack to the mission. So you don't have to go out there and just find a gigantic bug out bag list and pack all that stuff in there. If you're living in a warm climate, you're not going to need cold weather gear. That's just a, a big example of it. But you really wanna make sure that you are planning out where you're gonna to go to, how you're gonna get there, what are the routes you're gonna be at, what's the terrain you're gonna be in, and make sure that you're only packing those essential items that you're gonna need for your specific bug out route. The second thing you want to do is to think ultra light. Now in the military, we had a saying that was travel light, freeze at night. Well, you don't have to freeze at night, but you can make a big difference in what you actually carry. So if for survival purposes, instead of having a big sleeping bag, for example, what I use is a tack bivy. Now what this allows me to do is obviously save a lot of space inside my bug out bag, but it also drastically reduces the amount of weight that I'm carrying as well. In fact, my ultralight bug out bag, I have a video on that to show you it's only 16 pounds with the essentials inside of it. The third tip I have for you is to consider caching some supplies somewhere. Now when we were doing that road march for 100 miles, we would have resupply. We had Humvees going along with us. We had the ability to have water given to us and food that was there. So we didn't have to carry all of that stuff. You might not have that option if it's a survival situation. So consider caching, hiding some supplies or storing them along the way in different locations. Some people think that that's kind of like an advanced survival thing. It's actually a lot of fun. It's really not that hard to do, but just having some basic supplies along your bug out route that can resupply you with some basic things like water, food, maybe even ammunition, things like that is gonna really help you to, you don't have to carry as much stuff inside of your bug out bag if you can get to it along the way. Okay, tip number four is to carry heavier stuff closer to your body and down near your center of gravity. So the physics of it are actually pretty simple, right? If I take this weight and I hold it out in front of me, it's gonna take more effort for me to be able to hold it up. It's gonna feel heavier, as opposed to if I have it close to my body and down at my center of gravity, it's not going to feel as heavy. I'm gonna be able to distribute that weight better. Also, with your bug out bag, you're gonna to wanna to carry that weight as close to your waist belt as possible. That's why it's important to have a good waist belt, padded waist belt, or on your actual bug out bag. So that's gonna allow you to put that weight on your hips and carry it there rather than your back and your shoulders. Tip number five is to use one of these fancy schmancy vacuum bags for any of your extra clothing that you're gonna bring with you. All you do is put it inside of here. You don't even need a vacuum cleaner at all to take the air out. You just roll it up and it takes the air out on its own. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna really condense your clothing and anything cloth that you wanna put inside of there so that you can free up a lot more space inside of your bag. You can distribute that weight even better inside of their bag. And it's also gonna give you another layer of waterproofing for your clothes as well. Water weighs a lot. A gallon of water is gonna weigh eight pounds. So if your clothing does get wet, it is gonna mean that you're carrying more weight inside of there. And one of these vacuum bags is really, really helpful for all that. Tip number six is to organize any tactical pouches that you have functionally. So this is one of the advantages of having a tactical style backpack is that with Molly compatible pouches that you can put anywhere you want, you can also organize your for me, I have 
all, everything that I need, my shelter, bungee cords, everything that I need for a campsite, if you will, inside of just one of these pouches. I have three days of food, my cookware, utensils, things like that, all inside of one more of these pouches. Everything fits inside of there. In another one, I've got foot care. You can organize it however you want, but organizing it functionally allows you easier access to it and less thinking. And it, trust me, when it's a survival scenario, you want to maintain as much of your mental integrity as you possibly can. So not having to pull stuff out of your backpack and go looking for stuff and getting frustrated really, really does help. So organize your pouches functionally. Tip number seven is to micro-organize all the small stuff that you have for your bug out gear. Now this was a really cool trick that, um, that I kind of came up with, with using what I found works really well is a cosmetic case. So with a cosmetic case, I can put anything that is one of my bug out, you know, any of my smaller bug out gear inside of these little pouches inside of here. And then I can go ahead and roll it all up and this will fit inside of your bug out bag. Now, one of the things that I did was I actually designed a bag that works similar to this, but it integrates with my tactical bag as well. So this allows me to micro organize all that sm small gear so I'm not fishing around in the bottom of my backpack to be able to get to it. And you can do that functionally as well. You can put all of your, if you have fire starting equipment, whatever it is, I've got it right here, just comes right off of the pack. I've got all my stuff right there, rolls out, see-through little pouches in there, and then it's already right at my fingertips. Tip number eight is to have a breakaway pack that you can use when you're at your destination or you're just walking around. Now, in the military, we had it for short-term missions and assaults. It was actually integrated into the bag itself that you just pop it off. It was a kind of a butt pack, if you will, and you just take some meals and, you know, just some food in there and just something for you to be able to go on a short-term mission. Well, I like to have that same function in the bug out bag as well. So I have a small uh, integrated everyday carry sling pack that goes, integrates with the bag. So when I get to my destination, if I don't want to be carrying around my entire backpack, the assault pack, if you will, just kind of comes off the front of it and you can carry that around with you with just smaller items in there that you just need for short-term missions that you might be going out on for resupply or just carrying around with you. Now, of course, the design of your pack is super important and not all bug out bags are created equal. So I created some other videos that are gonna show you the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to choosing their bug out bag and how to pack it, all right? So check out those videos as well. And if you like these videos, go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to our channel and ring the little bell so you get a notification when our next video comes out. And until then, this is Jeff Anderson saying prepare, train, and survive.